So we walked in the front door and, and towards the back on our right was a room with an, a, 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 bam, a straw arc on the wall and cushions on the floor, no other furniture in that room. And people were quietly meditating on the cushions. Some, there were, and then, so we went and sat down on some cushions sort of a little further back because we were going to watch what was going on. And people had just closed their eyes and were just meditating until the services start. So, so we did the same thing and it was extraordinary watching. There were candles lit. There was no, no overhead light. There was no unnatural light. There were just candles. And then after a while, somebody began a very quiet nigun. And it, I, I was just, it was the most astonishing thing. It was exactly, I was home. I was exactly where God intended me to be. So I never looked back. I didn't want to leave that room. I said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to start a different kind of Jewish community. There has to be a Jewish community for people of our generations that will have different values and that will be a kind of like this, like this uh, non, non, non-celibate monasticism that he's talking about. The definition of the Chavura, I think this was, may have been already in the first year, someone said this. But I remember it came up at a meeting and somebody said this. To be a member of the Chavura means when you land at Logan Airport, you can call anyone on the Chavura list without embarrassment and ask them to come pick you up. That was the position paper. And then the, it's kind of like a Talmudic uh, uh, sugya. And then the, um, the, the addition to that was you can call anybody and ask him to come pick you up without embarrassment. And you can say no without embarrassment. But just the notion that males would embrace was so startling to me, and yet it became routine practice. Uh-huh. Zalman was also a big hugger. That's why about. These were the big huggers, <laughs> as I recall it. So, you know, you, didn't, you did not shake hands, you hugged. The role of learning was to meet each other. It was the best use of traditional texts that I have ever experienced. It wasn't to learn and know more. It was to know each other. We would sit and learn, and people would prepare a lot. George Saverin taught, like, you know, Bible classes that he, he would prepare four and five hours for every hour that he would teach. But even so, in that group, in that circle, in the second floor, when we would sit around that table, we learned about each other. And that was transformative. And I think it, it has the best chance of being transformative to Jewish life in the future. One of the nice things about Chavar Shalom was that I, I think if somebody wanted to try something, they were given the opportunity to try something. You know, anything went at least for one time, and um, people voted on their feet, I guess, if they wanted to happen again. Um, but when the services were good, they were really good. And we were on retreat, and uh, for Shachri, we were up, some, some of us were up early, there were 10 of us, nine men and me. And no one was thinking, you know, oh, we would arm a minion or anything like that. And then somebody, one of the, our, our members was, I think Epi, it was saying Kaddish. And he was and, the one he grew up with. The and someone said, oh, we can't, we can't, Epi can't say Kaddish, there isn't a minion. So I counted noses and I said, why, there's 10 people here. And I wasn't being provocative. Remember, I grew up in a feminist household. I mean, I granted that feminism hadn't hit Judaism yet in my world or anybody else's world. But I just, here we were, I mean, we were equal people and I was a, Player, I wasn't, you know, I hadn't been applied, applied and gone to, gotten admitted or whatever. But I, you know, I was very much a part of the community. So and people were like, oh, <laughs> and then someone said, well, let's ask. Epi gets to decide whether he can say Kaddish with, with, you know, nine men and a woman. And Epi said, fine. Was it immediate? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. then in many, I, other, and then, many other cases, we specifically studied the halachic sources. But in this case, it we was we had for, for other things. But in this case, we needed to make a decision. 
And it didn't come from ideologically, it just came because there were 10 people with it. And then from that, pretty much from that day forward, we were egalitarian. There were, uh, you know, 20 of us out in the backyard trying to figure out how to put up a sukkah. And, you know, as I say, it's a bunch of, of Jewish guys who, who didn't know which end of the hammer to use, you know. Um, and and, and I, I said at the time, I said, uh, you know, there should be a Jewish whole earth catalog that you look into and you get instructions on how to build a sukkah. You know, as, as the whole earth catalog demonstrated, there were lots of people who were interested in this kind of reappropriation of the tools and resources of life to, 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 to empower and, 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 and revivify their, their, their experience. This whole story, this whole narrative about Uncle House, and uh, it made the house into kind of a storybook uh, figure. And, uh, it, and we each had names, uh, the kitchen crew that made, made these uh, vegetarian dinners on, uh, every night. Um, we were, he, he made his nickname Major Mushroom. And uh, Stephen, who was a kind of dominating fellow, uh, became Commander Kitchen. And, uh, and I was uh, 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 the Admiral Avocado, as, as I was called, or sometimes Admiral Clavado Avocado. There was a, uh, a brand of avocado that came out of California called Calavado. Uh, as, a, as a single adult male, I was introduced to a lot of salads that I had never seen before in my life, to tell it for sure, at Chavarat Shalom. So, but also, you know, a mood, a certain mood. And again, Art and Zalman were extremely good at setting these moods. I don't recall meat meals. I know there was a, a the first year of the Chabra, before I became a member, uh, Reb Zalman uh, taught a course on, on shechting, uh, on slaughtering of animals. And, uh, you know, it was based on the philosophy, if you're going to eat it, you might as well be the person to, uh, to kill it. So a lot of things came out of that. The, that moment in time. So yeah, it wasn't, but many things percolated. Utopia means that, you know, it's, so it's a flash in the pan, but it creates a model of what's possible. I, I, I think for a long time, I, I would say that my Judaism was shaped by being in Chavrat Shalom, and that's the Judaism I've carried through my life. Uh, I think in a lot of ways that's still true. And to the extent that I think those labels are not particularly useful. I mean, the denominationals are not, the labels are not. So I think, uh, you know, I don't know if I would say it exactly the same way, but it's some of the, so th these minyanim, right, are, there is no rabbi. Even though some people may be rabbis in it, but there's no person who's the official yeah. rabbi, right? Um, different people take turns leading the services or giving the Devar Torah, you know, the, 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 the teaching, the sermon, whatever. So those are, are all kind of, I would say, intrinsic um, values of, uh, of the Chavaramu, of those early days.